What up, y'all? So a lot of people have been asking me how to get their music on my brand, Vile Hip Hop News. I think I got away. I'm going to start doing music video reactions for independent artists. If you're interested, email me at dlsmediainc1 at gmail.com for details. Want a live interview with Vile Hip Hop News? Email me, samant at dlsmediainc1 at gmail.com. Let's go. Welcome to another episode of the Hip Hop Uncensored Podcast. I'm your brother, Oga from Hip Hop News Uncensored. And sitting across from me is my co-host. What up, what up, y'all? It's your man, Sam Ant, CEO of Vile Hip Hop News. You're in the building for a very special edition of the Hip Hop Uncensored Podcast. we got a special guest back in the building. I don't yeah. know how many times this brother's been on the podcast, but what I do know is every time we call, he picks up and he's right here. we got yeah. the good brother, Andrew Wyatt, on the podcast. How you doing, family? Good to see you. I'm doing great, fam. Sam, oh, great to see you, man. Hoping everybody's doing well in your family as well. Likewise. Yes, sir. Appreciate that as always. Let's get right to it, man, because a couple days ago, a bombshell dropped. I mean, maybe a bombshell to some people. Some people may have expected it. Right. Diddy got locked up, currently in federal custody. We see the litany of things coming out, looking all very damaging. Man, oh, man. Well, what do you think about just to start there? When, when he got arrested a couple days ago, what was your initial thoughts to the arrest? Well, it. it it, it, it didn't shock me because we discussed it and talked about talked about it on your show some months ago uh, when they ate with uh, Homeland Security raided his home, both of his homes in L.A. and Miami simultaneously. And they had the media there and it got out so quickly to the public. You know, they knew what they had. They knew what they had uncovered. And it reminded me of R. Kelly. He was tried and found guilty in that same district, um, Harvey Weinstein uh, and Donald Trump. And the Southern District, if you look at Damien, uh, the Attorney General, Damien Williams, I think is his name. He is the same one that prosecuted Trump. He prosecuted all these crimes. And, and to, the, the look at the Southern District of New York, and it just shows you Diddy still has all of his businesses there. But I think they saw him not showing any remorse. And what I mean by that, you know, he was out whitewater rafting. He was, you know, still hanging out in Miami. And, mm -hmm. you know, it, it looked as, old, as though he was, you know, just going about life as if nothing was going to happen and nothing was wrong. And I think they had to, share, you know, send a convincing message that, you know, we're going to take you down and we're going to take down all of your enterprises. And what he did not do, which was shocking, because, you know, he is the guru of publicity and promoting. He right. never took the time to humanize himself. He never took the time to to show himself in a different light. And I think that's because he's never been taught how to show himself in a different light. If you look at his mentors, Andre Harrell, uh, Clive Davis, and now Clive Davis was out and he has Alzheimer's as if he doesn't know who Diddy is anymore. Yeah. And that was your mentee. And, but it's, it's like, if somebody show you how to make lemonade one way and you turn that lemonade into a billion dollar enterprise, you're going to keep making it that one way. Uh, he only knew how to run bad boy, his image one way. And uh, it's going to be interesting because I think the defense, you know, they have to, put on a case of saying these people were not children. They were consenting adults. Now, did they have consent? You know, were they forced to take drugs? But did they have consent? Did they take drugs willingly? And did they go to these freak offs, you know, under their own conditions where they forced to go to these freak offs? I just think he has a, this is a heavy, legal battle ahead of him and and the reason why they kept him, him in custody is they're trying to send a message that no you're not going to ever see the light of day again and we're trying to get you acclimated to your surroundings mm. we want you to get comfortable so you know you had enough time to take care of your affairs and it was a true sign because i had never seen an indictment so detailed mm -hmm. and the reason why the federal government made that indictment so detailed hey they want to cut off public opinion and people saying oh you know it's a witch hunt uh we don't have anything 
for them to put in an indictment, the thousand bottles of lube, that was a lot. Yeah. And that was to cut off uh, his access to his friends, even supporters and fans to say, look, we're telling you this guy is a serial monster and we need to get him off of the streets. And that was and, and his attorneys, which was shocking because I don't care if you've never been before, uh, the, been in the court system, being a product of the court system. We all know families, family members and friends who have had to go before a judge and get bail and or, or go to some some bond office to try to get a bond for his attorneys to propose a, a, a bond agreement of 50 million dollars. They already knew that and put up his houses, his mother home, his son's homes. They already knew and that he would not be around any women. They knew the severity, the severity of the charges. So they they were saying to the world and to the courts, we know this is going to be a multi, multi, multi million dollar case that you have against us. And we're offering you 50 million dollars. Mm. Wow. Um, did his attorney, in your opinion, mislead him to thinking that he would be you know, be able to just go in and, and bond out because he's been in front of the judge twice trying to bond out and he's offering the world and they're not letting him well, out. Well, his attorneys, they they did not prepare him properly. Right. Uh, and, and what I mean by that, when the video came out against Cassie, with Cassie and him beating her in, in the hotel lobby, in the, in the hallway of the hotel, not the lobby, when that came out, uh diddy turns around and he does his apology video yeah well you know when you're innocent of, of something you don't admit, you don't admit guilt to anything you deny 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 you know and you know when they reach you know miranda rights one of the first things they say is that you have the right to remain silent anything you say can be used against you well you have to authorize those rights in your psyche everywhere you go. I'm going to remain silent. Okay, you have a video. A video is damning, yes. But is there more to the video? Is there more to the story? You basically admitted guilt. I, I tell people it's no different when you get pulled over for a traffic ticket and then the officer say, hey, where are you speeding? You know, your response respectfully, how fast was I going? Because I saw myself doing the speed limit, but how fast do you have me going? Can you show me the video of how fast you have me going? Once they coerce you to admit to something, you're saying that I'm guilty of it. And because of him being Diddy, you got to know there are more videos out here. Now, we recently saw a few days ago, probably right around the time he was arrested, that his PR quit, shut her email off, shut her phone yeah. off. Disassociated. I got time. I got calls yesterday from national media outlets asking if I had come on board uh, and, and taken her job. And, wow! And, and no, no, I haven't. You know, I I never responded to them. I'm saying on your show for the first time. No, I have not. Uh, uh, several people reached out to me. Uh, I don't know what happened. Hold on. Several yeah. people reached out to me. Uh, several people reached out to me um asking me who were close to after i did your show a matter of fact wow. media outlets are calling so um okay yeah you know i was reached out to by a very close friend of of, of sean uh, combs right after i did your show um she lives in los angeles and she's represented some amazing big names and um she spoke to him and she sent me a text message asking me um, would I consider coming on board uh, to represent and work with him. And I told her, look, you know, I'm always open to a conversation. And the message that came back to me um, in his mind, he felt that charges were not going to come down. And one of his issues was the fact that well, he's he's too closely tied to Mr. Cosby. Uh, that was what she told me. 
And I, the, my response to her was like, well, hey, look, I understand that, but there's no video floating around of Mr. Cosby. Now, Mr. Cosby was the litmus test for all of this uh, because when we saw them, once they were able to manufacture, you know, these type of charges against Mr. Cosby from 40, 50 years ago, no evidence and proof or no truth to it. Well, they had, he was a litmus test. It was tried, true, and tested. So now they get to go after anybody. And that's what they did with Sean Combs. That's what they did with R. Kelly. That's what they did with Harvey Weinstein. Even, even more, it, it, it worked out better for them because they had evidence with these guys. Mm -hmm. There were no recordings or videos of Mr. Cosby of the alleged allegations of him drugging, drugging and raping women. But now we we hear about these freak off parties. And now what my concern is his safety, you know, because Jeffrey Epstein was in that same prison. Yeah. And Jeffrey Epstein had the black book that could have taken down the world. But he had Prince Andrew in the book, uh, you know, Bill Clinton, uh, President Obama, all of these people was hanging with Epstein. My concern is how is this going to filter off into the world of a Jay-Z or a Beyonce? How is this going to filter off into the world of all of these iconic figures out here uh, who attended these freak off parties? Mm. So yeah. we I, we asked we had Judge Joe Brown on a couple of days ago. We also had attorney Al Shabazz out of New York on a couple of days ago. Asked him what I'm about to ask you. Did Diddy, because Diddy went back to New York under the assumption he knew what was happening. He went back to New York. Was that arrogance or was that like a mishap on his attorney's part to tell him or, or lead, misleading him into thinking that? Because I, I don't think in my mind Diddy went to New York thinking that he was going to go into prison and stay there. I think he said he's going to he go went in to there. New York. He went to New York to turn himself in. They had right. already uh, alerted his attorneys that they were going to be, you know, filing charges against him. And, they, and the, the indictment had went through the grand jury. So he knew that he was going to New York to turn himself in. Now, he thought he was going to be able to turn himself in, post a bond, and, and those things. What my, my problem with the legal team, they should have worked all of this out. You don't have a guy who's on the level of a Sean Combs or Diddy uh, who has millions of dollars and because of who he is and you don't work some type of uh, agreement out on how he's going to turn himself in. I, I think they should have gotten with the district. They should have gotten with the prosecutor and they should have said, I tell you what, you guys are going to file the charges, but can we come to some type of agreement that you would not deny him bail? And you give us the number that you would be looking for. We, they turned over his passport, you know, everything that he has because they looked at him as being a flight risk. Now, what I'm hearing from people in the in in the business is that they felt that he was going to try and flee. Uh, so that's why they picked him up unexpectedly. But I I, I truly believe that when you look at the political landscape and what's going on in politics. Mm -hmm. And this is a federal election, okay? This is the federal government. So I think it plays hand in hand. Just let me take you back just a week ago. Mm -hmm. um, there was another assassination attempt on Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. What better way to get that out of the news and, and opposed to giving Trump any more leverage, hey, Let's let's try to change the trajectory of, of the news cycle. And it did. It mm -hmm. took the news cycle away from the assassination. And now everybody's talking about D. Yeah. So you yeah. have to look at it from that aspect of the, the federal government. Look, the vice president uh, who's running for president and the president of the United States, you know, Joe Biden, they could have easily said to the federal government, hold off on this. Mm. Wow. Mm -mm. And, and, and wow. people look at this from a very small window. You have to look at all angles of why now. And that's the question, why now? And I think that's where 
here's my problem with Diddy. Mm -hmm. Will he have an opportunity to get a fair trial? No, because he doesn't have access to his attorneys. They cut off his access. He can't talk on the phone to his attorneys because th those are no recorded lines. Uh, he, he doesn't have the access to sit down with his attorneys and comb through evidence and help be a part of the process of his defense. They have to make an appointment. It's not like they have access to him to be with him from eight in the morning to 11 o'clock at night. Right. The, the windows, you only have visitation hours. You know, they're only, you know, and you at maximum you get two to three hours. So how can you have six counts against a Diddy and he, he doesn't have the proper way of, of defending himself? I always say, you know, the government sent a message and, and what Diddy, he always talk about, talked about, don't hate the player, hate the game. Well, he's just the player, a small player. The game is the government. Hmm. Right. Right. Um, the, the suicide watch, they that news came out maybe last night, this morning. It looks like this is following in the same steps as Jeffrey Epstein thing. Suicide watch. Next thing you know, an inmate of somebody or he hangs himself or whatever. Well, he, they, they have to eliminate yeah. him. They have to eliminate him. And uh they're gonna say that he wasn't in his right mind they're they're what, what media is doing now they're preparing the public before you can say that the government killed or murdered sean combs they're preparing you now he's on suicide watch he's he has these issues going on you're gonna hear a litany of of things come out about his mental health and his emotional health Mm -hmm. They're preparing you now because, look, when will he probably go to trial? It it won't be until next year sometime. Yeah, they they got to get through all of the hearings. They got to get through all of the mo the motions that are going to be filed by the attorneys. They have to get through all. They have to comb through the evidence. You got to remember when a, when you go before a grand jury, the only person who gets to cite their case before the grand jury is the prosecutor. Wow. The defense is not allowed to be there. You have between 12 and 28 jurors that they select to be a part of a grand jury. The prosecutor gets to say any and everything of what they want to say. No oversight, no vetting, uh, no rebuttal. The defense, the defendant, they, the defense counsel, the defendant, they're not allowed to be a part of that grand jury process. So that, that, that prosecutor gets to say all of the salacious things mm -hmm. that he wants to say just to get them. Cause the goal is to get the indictment. So now Diddy has been indicted of six count racketeering, uh, trafficking, uh, drugs. Uh, how many people right now, that's what he has to be thinking about. How many people, are talking right now. I can tell you, I did the prison time with Mr. Cosby. I did the time. Mm -hmm. uh, and although I was not incarcerated, it was the same effect. You, you're doing the time with this person. I remember, you know, talking to him the first night, you can't sleep you're 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 tossing and turning mm -hmm. you know because you're used to a certain comfort level or used to a certain bed mm -hmm. so that has a play on your psyche now you can't talk to people as mr cosby he got up one morning blind in his cell thinking he could just open the door and go and pick up the phone and call mm. wow it's, it's 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 that mental anguish that you go through and it took him probably six months and he's blind to mm -hmm. try to get comfortable. Six months. Mm -hmm. You know, you're eating cold cereal for breakfast and they give you a piece of, a piece of toast. 
you know, the food is horrible. So you're crying out for help. And eventually a guy like Diddy, who's young, you know, who's young, you just uprooted him overnight, overnight. You took his life away overnight. You took fine champagne away, fine water, fine dinners, fine clothing, uh, the comforts of being in your own home, the comforts of being able to be around family and friends and talk things out and therapists. You took all of that away uh, in less than 24 hours. So, yeah, he is suicidal. And yes, the government is saying, how many people is he going to rat on? Diddy can't do the time. And I'm going to remind you and take you back. You need Google it on your phone while mm-hmm. we're on the phone. Google the name Corey Jacobs. Mm-hmm. Google Corey Jacobs and Diddy. Mm. Corey had 16 life sentences. Diddy helped. He, he was the kingpin that funded Bad Boy. And he took the rap. Mm-hmm. Diddy mm-hmm. went to Obama and Eric Holder and got Corey a party. Corey moved back to the L.A. home with Diddy. He bought him two Rolls Royces, Rolex watches, everything. Because Corey, he kept over $100,000 on Corey books. Wow. So yeah. this was this is also to say, okay, Corey, we can't try you for this again because that's double jeopardy. You got a pardon. But at the end of the day, you're back with Diddy. We're going to get you back in prison. They're going after everybody. Now, from your from your PR perspective, is there anything that Diddy can do to save himself in a situation or is his goose cooked? Because it seems like it's and Look, we've had many conversations with you about Dr. Cosby, R. Kelly, and every conversation I've felt like there was some type of slither of hope. It, it's always a, it's always a slither of hope. You know, yeah. first of all, the Constitution, although not perfect, it's the only document we have to live by. You're innocent and to prove you guilty. And what you have to focus on, if it was me, I would be out here right now telling his story. I would be telling his story, talking about Sean Combs, not Diddy. Diddy's dead. Love is dead. Okay. All of those Elias are dead. They're gone. Let's talk about no one ever got to see Sean Combs because Sean Combs did not want the world to meet Sean Combs. Sean Combs is a vulnerable person. Sean Combs is a person who has been led down a lot of dark path. And then you gotta, you must expose who these people are, these, these people that are accusing him. You have to expose it. You know, he has a right to taint the jury pool because the jury pool has already been tainted against him, it's spoiled against him. That Southern District, the moment he has his trial, their minds are already made up. Mm. Their minds, look, there was no fair, fair trial for uh, R. Kelly. There was no tri- fair trial for uh, with a, a fair jury trial with Harvey Weinstein, with Donald Trump. You think they're going to let Diddy off? New York is notorious. That, that Southern District, you're getting jurors who say, you know what? Why should I find him not guilty. He's rich. He's wealthy. I'm having trouble paying my bills. The psyche of jurors, man, when you, when you go through this and, and you, you get to, after a trial, you get to interview those jurors and call them. And every juror that we interviewed, uh, all said the same thing. Stay away from young people on the jury. They're just trying to make a name for themselves and they do not read at all. They've all, their minds are already made up. Yeah. So the 20, 30 year olds, stay away from them. You got to look at older jurors who are going to take the time to read and dissect the information. And my thing right now, his attorneys, I, I feel like they need to have someone out speaking on his behalf, not someone white. He's been surrounded by white people all his life. You got to have people that look like you now, because what they're trying to do is take his black support away. Yeah. They've already taken the white support away. Right. You got to have the black support. They they got to come and do his attorneys got to come and do hip hop uncensored. They got to do the grassroots shows now. They cannot depend on mainstream media because mainstream media is going to dictate the message. They're going to change up the messaging. 
Uh, they're not going to put out any of the facts or truth because they need to see you go down. Right. Uh, those tapes, there's been a lot of speculation that he, Diddy is a fall guy that, and this is just all speculation and rumor, that he recorded some pretty powerful political figures or movie stars or whatever on those tapes because apparently he's recording everything and using that against people. He's smart. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, do you think that's one of the major reasons why they seen something in there of maybe a, a big political figure, a big player in the game, and, you know, they want to protect that information that's why i say it's an election season okay you know it's a federal election season you know can you imagine um maybe kamala harris has been at some of his parties mm. maybe he's giving mm. money to her campaign um can you imagine all of the people that have been at these free calls yeah. you know we could google on our own and see all of the stars that were at his home and political people at his home and his parties. So that's a big fear. Uh, the, the big fear is to silence him right now and don't give him a voice until after the elections are over. Because I, I, go I guarantee you there's some scathing <laughs> things out here that the world is not ready to hear and right. they don't want the world to hear. Now, me personally, when you look at this, and I think as attorneys, if I was representing him, I would say, hey, look at the process of, el of elimination. Who do we eliminate first? They're going to try to eliminate our client. Now, the way we prevent them from eliminating our client is we get out here in front of this right now. This is a moving Amtrak a seller. This ain't no New Jersey transit train or a subway train. This is a seller. It's moving at a high pace. Mm -hmm. And and you got to get out here and you got to throw everything out here. His sons and his family cannot get out here talking on his behalf because they're all subject to being sued civilly. Yeah. You know, uh, they cannot get out here and say anything on his behalf because they're a part of all of this. They're central figures in in this in, in in this prosecution, and so them saying anything opens up a door uh, for more charges to come, not only against him but against his family. Now let me let me ask you this, because all right, let's say all right, let's say he has tapes, he has recorded tapes of these alleged free golfs involving adults. Let's say they're all adults. But there's stuff on there that people don't want to see homosexual behavior, maybe infidelity, whatever the case may be. None of that's illegal. It's all taboo, but it's not illegal. Right. Right. Are we are we talking about a situation where he did that you feel like he's broken laws and that's why he's in it? Or he has dirt on people that could potentially ruin some reputations. And this I, is what we're talking about here. I don't I don't feel like Diddy broke any laws that nobody knew about. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't feel that way. Uh, you don't go get, nobody gives you the key to the city. Everybody knew every law he was breaking. He, he told you he was a bad boy. Okay. Right. So uh, he never hid who he was. He never really hid his sexuality. Uh, because when, when, when stories came about Christopher Williams saying that, you know, he, he had to give him a blow job to get a deal. Did he never came out and said it wasn't true? A fact. Because yeah. he could have been sued for defamation. Hmm. He didn't try to change the messaging, okay? So at the end of the day, what's damning is they had to silence him right now. Because you could call it a conspiracy theory. It's not a conspiracy. This Diddy probably has people in these free calls that they probably ask him, to destroy the tapes, I can only imagine how many people reached out to him and said, "Hey, bro, you got me on tape." Real talk, this you know, like, "Hey, you got me on tape. If you do, do you mind destroying it?" And sure. when he said no to to all of these people, because that's his only leverage he has. Yeah. With now the they're considering adults. Too. I don't feel like me personally, and I know I will probably get attacked for this. I. You know, America has put out the wrong message to say that women don't lie because that's a lie. 
Mm -hmm. uh, they have put out the wrong messaging to say that women can should not be held accountable for their actions or their because uh, they're you're now saying that you know women have the right to have a disassociation that, with accountability and responsibility. Um, to me, if, if if you're attending these parties, knowing the premise and knowing the objectives of the party, you know, why go? You know, why no one can make you owe a Sam take drugs unless you want to take drugs. Exactly. If, if you want to smoke a joint, you want to smoke a joint, okay? Uh, no one can force that on you. Now, it's, it's a difference if someone held you down by force and poured liquor down, poured it in your mouth. That's right. different. But how 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 do you, how does one get to say that I willingly attended the party? I drove myself to the party. I caught an Uber to the party. I flew in for the party, but I was fearful that if I didn't do it, I wasn't going to be able to do X Y Z. So what? Okay, how many people get terminated for job from jobs today because they didn't want to pick up the trash or clean the bathroom? Right. Right. There's no legal, there's no legal uh, case being filed against some employee who said, well, you know, that wasn't part of my job description, but they wanted me to sweep the floors. And I felt that was degraded. You had the ability to walk away, go change jobs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I want to, um, a lot of people were saying that, um, this got started when he went after Diego wine and spirits, the company that, that was the, um, do you yeah. know? Do you do you know who controls the liquor business? The federal government. They wow. tobacco, the tobacco, alcohol. It's called TTB. Okay. They control it. Okay. You gotta under. Let Let's go back. I tell everybody when you take on these cases and when you do what I do. The only way you're gonna be successful is studying the history of anything. Yeah. I don't care what you get into. Whether you have a podcast, you had to study the history of it to know if it was going to be successful and how to make it successful. Okay, so that's anything you go into. You got to go back to prohibition and you mm -hmm. got to go back to Capone and how they were bootleggers. Okay, they were paying off the federal government because you're going across state line bringing alcohol. Alcohol travels across state lines, it travels internationally, right? Mm -hmm. So it's controlled by the federal government. Diageo has tentacles. Okay, you want to sue us civilly? We've been paying you sixty million a year, a proposed sixty million a year, and you want to sue us civilly? Our tentacles are much longer than you can ever imagine. And they said, "Well, no, nah, okay, okay, we brought Cassie out against him. They ain't enough. You know what we're about to do now? We're about to use our tentacles and reach over into the Justice Department." Mm. And if he was smart, if he was smart, he would have had done what Russell Simmons did. Sold everything. Get out of New York. Go mm -hmm. to Bali. Be his next door neighbor. Right. And, sell, and sell all your businesses. If he was smart, you know. And I'm not saying he's not a smart guy. But sometimes society and the world builds these celebrities up. But at the end of the day, you got to always understand and I'm not going to use the word on your show. I just use this word. You're mm -hmm. always a no grow. Right. Yes, sir. I'm going to always a no grow. Understood. 50 Cent, he, he says something about him. This is a one minute clip. I want to. Like, corporations oh. like me, my particular experience with Beam Centauri, it was great in the beginning. It's great for us to work for them. It's not so cool when you start to own them. You see what I'm saying? So I made a lot of money with them too. Like, there's a point. They, they did a deal that mirrored what Puffy's deal with the IGO was for Sarah. So he didn't have ownership at any point, but he was getting a lot of money, like almost like $60 million a year at one point. So you see him go to Daily On is when you see him have some issues. And these people have really strong relationships. Don't think that the civil case doesn't turn into a criminal case. Mm -hmm. That's the, because he's making that them uncomfortable. That's a big part of it. The spirits business is it's not governed. They got a discus board that they created, right? You got two companies that are $3 billion a year, 
and being Centauria and Diageo, the, the distribution level is very hard for you to get things to a point where you can do the numbers, the right numbers. They incentivize the sales force by giving them box bonuses. And then when you sell the product, you get the bonuses off the boxes that's there. But you make that no matter what product you're selling. So if, if you sell Hennessy or Remy out the gate, they start to put down pressure on the new companies. All right, that, that's just a small clip. Well, and, and that's exactly yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Oh, T is crazy. <laughs> it, it, I haven't even heard that, seen that clip. Same thing. It's yeah. like, it, 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 you, you got to do the research and know the history of how it yeah. works. You know, look, I, I've been involved with several of my friends. I got a friend who has a bourbon out right now. Uh, and uh, we got it in all the liquor stores. I got another friend uh, who has his own rum out. My I have a family member. She's an investor in a vodka company. Uh, so it's around me. And mm -hmm. I understand how the business works. It's just when the tentacles are so long, it's when you get out of pocket. And Diddy got out of pocket. And what I mean, he got out of pocket. They don't want to see a no-grow accumulate planes and touting themselves as a billionaire. Now they have exposed... Where's the billion dollars? And I always say this, whether it was Mr. Cosby or Kelly, Harvey Weinstein, these people are asset rich and cash poor. Mm. They have the assets and the assets could be two billion dollars with the assets. Right. But when charges like these come about, your assets are diminished in value. And they purposely bring these charges because that's what happened with Mr. Cosby. Look at his artwork. He, he, he could have a painting that's worth $100 million, but when the charges came out, the, the, the painting and artwork never supposed to depreciate. It's right. supposed to always appreciate. But the paintings went down from $100 million. Some of them went down to like $10 million. Wow. We had people to come and tell us Mrs. Cosby was trying to liquidate things just to help fund because after he was incarcerated, we lost AIG. We lost the insurance that was paying all the legal bills because it was to that benefit to supplement the criminal cases. So what they did with, with Diddy, once he settled with Cassie, his insurance company dropped it. Wow. So now you're seeing the real wealth. He only has the properties to put up. He he couldn't go out and touch $50 million cash. He just put up properties. Yeah. Mm. Because the, and the government is smart enough. Why would we why would we let you bond out and give a, and offer us a bond of $50 million with your real estate when right now nobody probably wants your real estate because you're in all this trouble? And nobody probably wants to live in a house with all these freak offs you know, next door neighbors. Nobody probably wants this property. They devalue the property. They don't want that. They want the cash. And what they have done, they cut off his access, believe it or not, because the federal government has frozen his accounts. Mm -hmm. So how can he get money to defend himself? Now his attorneys, they got to hire another firm to come in and try to get those, those funds released so he can have the right to his counsel. No, nah, they're going to tell him he got all these houses he offered, tell them to sell the homes. See, yeah. you have to be careful how you portray yourself to be. That's why you don't see prime example. Show me when you've ever seen Denzel Washington show off his homes and his lifestyle. Never. Never saw it. You nope. never will. Because mm -hmm. Denzel understands who he is. Have you ever seen Will Smith show off his home and cars? No. You just see him going from helicopter and private jet. He's not paying for that kind of stuff. People want him on their planes. Uh, they understand that Oprah. When have you ever seen Oprah plane? Have you seen Tyler Perry's plane? Nope. Because at the end of the day, uh, as Mr. Cosby always said, it, hey, man, I'm still a no girl to them. You said something a couple minutes ago that caught my attention when you were talking about how people may have called Diddy and said, hey, delete that tape, delete that tape. Now, we've seen that 
the federal authorities have taken some of his recordings, his video, t- uh, uh, phone recordings of him talking to different artists, previous artists, whoever he may have trying to bribe him. Do they have those access to, would they have access to those type of tapes of people asking him to delete things if they were out? And if they do, what are they going to do with that? I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure his lines were tapped. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure they, they have access to all that. They, they're, Look, it's going to be a lot of bombshells dropped during the trial. And will we get to see a trial? I think the deck is stacked so heavy. Uh, you might see Diddy take a deal. And don't be surprised that R. Kelly might not be talking. Mm. Don't be surprised, okay? Mm. Uh, prison is not an easy thing to do. Yeah. People brag about federal time. Well, well, you're on some type of resort. It all depends what federal prison they send you to. Right. But one thing about it, I, I tell everybody, hey, man, spend all your money you got to stay on the ground. Because as long as you're free, you can make money. You can't make money when you're free. Because here's the problem. If he's found guilty, can you imagine the millions of dollars of restitution? Mm, mm, mm. Break and it. see, I still go back to Mr. Cosby. When they saw this last lawsuit come out against Diddy for a hundred million dollars, the government said, "You know what? No, we got to get our piece of the pie. They're gonna hold all of his money up, and because they know the circus is about to come to town, and they're collecting tickets, and." Uh, the tickets is, is his financial means. And the government is like, no, they're shutting everything down because now they're going to take all of those people who are filing suits against him and they're going to integrate them into their prosecution to be witnesses against him. And they're probably they're probably telling those people, I'll tell you what, you know, he's found guilty. He's going to have to pay millions of dollars out in restitution. So you will see the houses the the planes the boats and i always remind people diddy made the biggest mistake and i think you guys might have seen it you might not if you remember when he purchased the yacht he had his staff lined up on the deck of the yacht Mm -hmm. and they were all white people and he said look at me a black man got all these white people working and taking care of me taking Mm -hmm. care of me Mm -hmm. at the end of the day White people don't like that. Who who does this no girl think he is to say that we're working for him and we got to clean up after his freak off, his alleged freak off parties? We got to do, we got a sex cleaning crew. Come on. And he's going to degrade us like this. And they, if you go back and look at that video, if you can find it, look at the faces of all the people on the deck. The decades. Look into their eyes. Mm-hmm. It was so much anger there. That this black man is saying, I got them taken care of. Me. Right. Um, so he pushed a lot of buttons. Mm-hmm. And I, I always believe, because I believe in us as a race. Yes, sir. I always believe that. I don't care how wealthy we are, we're still black people. And we don't have the means and resources to run an enterprise of that nature. Mm. My, my last question, and we definitely appreciate you know, the 45 minutes you spent with us today. Absolutely. I think the oh, unseen no, man, anytime, anytime. Yeah, the unseen hand, you know, will be Jay-Z. You we mentioned Jay-Z, Beyonce. We talked about this before. Um, you know, he was Jay Z was cool with Diddy, man. They were doing those Rock Nation brunches together, talking about black excellence. It was almost, it reminds me of um the Frank Luke the American Gangster movie when he wore that, that mink coat and they put him on the radar. To yeah. me, that's what those Rock Nation brunches was like. This is the pinnacle. Like we rich, we ain't got to do nothing for nobody. We black. And next thing you know, things come tumbling down. So what role does Jay Z, if any, play in this? And will he? be the next domino to fall? Well, I think they're preparing. 
let me go back and 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 I always use Mr. Kazi because he was the one that it started with. Right. Right. Okay, in 2014, the, the allegations came out around October, November of 2014. Okay, but early in the year, uh, an article came out with Newsweek by Gawker that related Bill Cosby, R. Kelly, Woody, Woody Allen as rapists. He called me up. He was in Maine doing the show. And he said, I said, well, there's nothing to it. It's not going to go anywhere. Well, we had been on the phone with Sony Pictures for his new TV show that was coming out. And Diane Carroll was going to play his wife February 2015. But early in that year, they gave him, and you never heard of this award ever again, the Johnny Carson Award. He was the first one and last one to get it. Same thing with Diddy. He got VMA, Music of the Year. He comes out with the Love album. He gets the key to the city. Uh, he gives a million dollars to Howard University. He's all over the place. Well, they fattened a the frog up for a snake. Mm. And he was the frog that they flattened up because the snake was waiting. We're going to give you all of these dead flowers that are never going to grow again. Rock Nation is an entity that exposes so much. But Jay-Z immediately distanced himself from Diddy. Immediately. Yeah. It, it was within seconds. Jay-Z was no longer a friend of Diddy. And look what happened to Meek Mill. <sighs> Meek Mill got dropped from Jay-Z's label mm -hmm. immediately. Mm -hmm. So Jay-Z has shown us that He's not going backwards. Look, Jay-Z made a song, said God did, and talked about how he can't. He turned champagne, cocaine into champagne. Yeah. <laughs> he ain't going backwards. <laughs> but, 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 let's look. But let's listen. But see who came to Jay-Z's aid when he made that and did a, and did a statement on his behalf, mm -hmm. President Obama. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh -oh. Go read President Obama's statement. That President Obama said, "Hey, he's this is this is my guy." Yeah. He's talking about what his life was and how you can change. And oh, and I'm paraphrasing Obama's statement, but Obama came to Jay Z's aid. Yeah. See, it's all about who do you have in your political corner that's going to come to your aid nobody ever came to diddy's aid because diddy forgot how to grow up mm. you never saw jay-z in the club partying with young people in their 20s and 30s diddy never he never figured out how to grow up just like r kelly never figured out how to grow up mm. and those are the people that they don't want to grow up mm. look jay-z when the allegations happen he, I don't think he did his big concert that he does in Philadelphia every year. Yes, uh, Made in America. Made yeah. in America. I don't yep. know if he did that. When the allegations happened, that didn't happen. Nope. Jay-Z re just slowly resurfaced with this Super Bowl thing. And Lil Wayne is now taking the hits. And, and you know, he didn't get selected. He got Kendrick Lamar. It's all he had to get Kendrick Lamar. He had to. Why? Because Wayne is too connected to Trump. Mm. Cause didn't Trump give Wayne a party? And Wayne came out and supported Trump in his presidency. Yeah. Wow. So you gotta understand he had to go with Kendrick Lamar because uh who is singing Kendrick Lamar's song? The vice president who's running for president, they ain't like us. Mm. And Kendrick Lamar is the anthem of what being good looks like what being wholesome looks like jay-z right. had to tie himself to that mm. wow wow i never look, even heard ben, that perspective that's crazy look, look yeah. benny siegel's on a food truck in philly yeah yeah all right uh <laughs> i'm just saying I'm, I'm just trying to put it in perspective line up what 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 is freeway doing they, they just doing that once they, they playing that one song uh freeway is benny's on the food truck uh, Meek Mill is no longer on the label. Jay-Z is getting away from all of that. Dame Dash, 
he got to sell his company. Yeah. Wow. Jay Z has Jay Z has gotten with a structure of what I call the black elites in Hollywood. Yeah. To say, I'm gonna be around the Oprah. I'm gonna be around Tyler. I'm gonna be around the who's who and Jay-Z has filtered off to be around the white people because that's where it's safe. Mm -hmm. That's where you're going to get your your bread buttered properly. Mm. Diddy's bread is going to be buttered a different way now. Ooh. Oh, I was about to say something crazy, but I'm not going to say it. It's going to be buttered, all right. But I it's going to be buttered. I'm just saying it's going to be buttered a different way. But I'm just saying... It's <laughs> gonna be butter. <laughs> I'm just saying. Man, sometimes, I'm sometimes you know, I tell everybody, man. People say, "Well, uh, I said, look, I'm, I'm, I'm a one of the consonant professionals, but I grew up in the projects, and I, I, I've seen this whole way of life, and you know, my job is to." Not tell people what they want to hear. It's the stuff that you don't want to hear. That's what's going to save you. Mm. And you can sit down and listen to the things that you really don't want to hear that that can possibly be your detriment. Uh, a lot of these celebrities, you think about it with, with, with the Cosbys. I'm the only black person that has ever represented them or worked for them in this capacity. No black attorneys, no black publicists. They don't, they don't, because they're they're shoved over to whites and Jews and say, okay, these are the only people that are going to help you, you know, ascend to that level you want to go. But you got to understand, those people keep receipts forever. They keep documents forever. For William Morris to have, that's look. Jay Z is with William Morris. Beyonce is with William Morris. The biggest agency who owns William Morris, R. E. Manuel, the brother to Rahm Emanuel. Rahm Emanuel was the chief of staff to Obama and Mayor of Chicago. Wow. wow. Who wrote Obamacare? Dr. Emanuel. Who had all the receipts on Cosby? William Morris. William Ooh. Morris. He was with them for 50 years. When, when Cosby told Obama that he wouldn't support him when he ran for president because he settled with this woman, that he went on Larry King Live and supported a white man. Obama told him, I got a machine to protect you. Michelle Obama would call the house all the time. He's like, nah, I can't go with him. I don't want to bring no trouble to him. But no, you went on Larry King and you supported a white man for president. Look, people don't forget. And what you got to understand is that this world is all political. Anything you do, get to know the DA. Get to know some judges because it's all political because your children are going to need it. You know, the real fight of fighting this case is not in the courtroom. It's in the court of public opinion. And you got to get and cultivate these streets now. You got to cultivate these people who was once your friends and try to lean on them because now they're going to take everything away. So, look, the butter is flowing for Jay-Z. The butter just ain't flowing for Diddy right now. Hmm. And it's unfortunate because right up under this, if he is in fact guilty of anything and there's victims involved, it doesn't seem like anybody gives a damn about that. The court don't give a damn about a victim. They, it, it, they're all pawns in a bigger plan and a bigger scheme. So nobody cares really about a victim. Affected, yeah, it's sad. Nobody cares about the victim. The victim never gets redemption. Mm -hmm. The victim is always the pawn on the chessboard. Yeah. Diddy is the pawn on the chessboard. But Diddy didn't have the right queen around him because. You know, the king is always susceptible, but the queen is the one that sees everything and protects everything. He didn't have the right people around him. He had too many yes people around him. He had too many people that didn't bulk up against him and didn't say no. Uh, but the victim would never get resolved. They will always be. Cassie was the benefit. She was a beneficiary. Cassie, we gave you guys one black woman. We we ain't gonna take all this money and make every black woman rich. No, mm -hmm. that 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 defeats our strategy. Our strategy is to eliminate black wealth, not to enhance it or increase it. Yeah, 
great points. Yeah, brother. Yeah, we can wrap it up. Okay. Yeah, man. We <laughs> definitely appreciate it's you, Andrew. Bro, right. man. Thank you, guys, brother. Thank you. No, thank you. You always come with a wealth of knowledge and a different perspective, and we appreciate you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. Andrew White on the Hip Hop and Sense of Podcast. Appreciate you, brother. Salute. Peace, man. Salute to you guys. And uh, if something changed, I'm coming on your show first. Nobody else. We'll be ready. Appreciate you. you. All right. Peace. Take care of yourself. Yes, sir. You too.